If you'd like to create more customized headers and footers but don't know where to start, then this video is for you. We're going to be taking a look at JetBlocks, a plugin from Zemez and Crocoblock that allows us to create feature rich headers and footers quickly and easily, all inside Elementor. So this video has been kindly sponsored by Template Monster. If you'd like to find out more about Template Monster or any of the ZMS plugins, you can use the link in the description below and grab yourself a copy of JetBlocks or any of the other great ZMS plugins. Now, what exactly does JetBlocks do? Basically, what it does is it allows us to create custom headers and footers that are feature rich. So we can do things like put search items in there. We can put our shopping basket in there. We can do things like custom menus, a whole range of really cool things, all utilizing this plugin and Elementor or Elementor Pro. So in this video, I just want to demonstrate some basics of how we can start to create these headers and footers and implement them throughout our site. So what we're going to do now is we're going to jump over into the dashboard of WordPress, open up Elementor and take a look at what JetBlocks allows us to do. So I jumped over into the dashboard and we're now ready to start creating things and using JetBlocks to start building our first header. Now it's pretty straightforward. All we need to do is just jump into the template setting and come into the theme builder. Now you don't need to do this, but it is probably the most versatile way of working with Elementor or Elementor Pro and then creating your custom headers. So I'm going to use this method throughout the video. So what we're going to do is we're going to come into the header section. And from there, we're going to say we want to create our new template. So we're going to say add new header. From here, we're going to give this a name and we're going to call this jet header. Click on create template. Once we've done that, that will open up the Elementor editor and take us into the template choosing area so we can choose from blocks, pages, or any of the templates I might have created and saved myself. However, for now, we're going to go and start with a completely blank page. So we're going to close this down just to jump out of there. And as you can see now, we have a fresh, clean blank page. You'll also notice that we have the word content area listed. Now this is because we're creating a template that's either dealing with the header or the footer. So this is an area that we can't actually add any content into because this is reserved for the actual physical content of the page that is filled in around the actual template itself. So what we need to do is if we jump over to the left hand side and scroll right the way down, you'll see that we now have jet blocks and inside jet blocks, we have eight individual widgets. For this first part, we're going to take a look at the author links or the authorization links. Now authorization links are pretty cool. And all we need to do is just drag those onto the page to start working with them. Before we do that, though, let's just come in and create a new section to drop that into. We're going to create a 50 50 section and we're just going to keep that plain and simple. Come back over to our widgets on the left hand side, scroll back down to find those and we're going to say we want the author links to drop up in the first left hand side. And there you go, you can see that's dropped in the author links. Now what the authorization links do is very, very simple and straightforward. It allows you to create login and registration links or my account and logout links depending upon the status of you as a user on the website. What we can do here as well is we can create this in such a way that we can link it through to some of the other widgets we have available as part of JetBlocks, and that's the ability to create custom registration and custom login pages. We'll take a look at that a little bit later in the video, but for now, just bear that in mind that we can reference those, or we can use the default normal registration and login pages of WordPress, or if we want to create something using another plugin, we could do that as well. So now that we've dropped that widget into our template, you can see on the left hand side, we've got all the controls to actually work with the content of this particular widget. We've got all the options available for the login, logout, register, registered and general options. And obviously we then have the styling tools to actually style the way that everything looks. So let's take a look at what we have first of all underneath the login link. You can see we can enable or disable this particular element. So if we disable it, you'll find the login option disappears and it's replaced just with the register option. Switch that back on, you can see it now brings that back up. Next thing we have is the login page URL. So like I say, you can use the default WordPress or you can create your own custom login pages, all done through this particular Jet plugin. So it's very easy to do and we will jump back a little later and take a look at that. Now underneath there, you can go in and you can edit the login link text. So you can set this to whatever you want. So if you don't want to work with the text login or you want to work in a different language, you can easily change that to get exactly what you want there. Next up, we've then got the login icon. 
We can expand that list out and you can see we can choose from a ton of different icons or we can just remove the icon completely. Following that, we then got the login prefix. You can see it says have an account question mark and then you can choose to log in or register. We could change that to whatever we want. So again, we could change the wording or if we wanted to use a different language, we could put whatever we want in there. Next up, we have the logout link and you'll tend to find that with all these different sections, they all have very similar options available. You can enable and disable it. You can change the icon, the text and all those kinds of things. But with this particular logout text, we can specify what happens after you change choose to log out. So where do you want to be redirected to? So you can see we have three options. We've got the home page, stay on the current page, or we can create a custom URL and put whatever we want in there. So we may have a notification on a page that says thank you for logging out and then provide some different links that allow them to go through to other parts of your site. Whatever you want to do on there. And again, we've got a login prefix, but this time we actually use the little wildcard and that will simply display the logged in username whenever this particular function is being displayed on the site. So again, pretty cool. Register link does the same kind of thing again on there. You can see we've got a range of different things we can do. We can enable and disable it. And the same goes for the registered link. So all pretty self-explanatory. Finally, we've got the general option and you can see this allows us to specify in what order the actual links and content is being displayed. So at the moment, it's got login, logout, register and registered. We could change that and flip it around to have the opposite. So quite easy, very simple to use. Next up, we've got the styling options. First of all, we've got the alignment, which allows us to specify the alignment of this content based upon any of the three devices we can view this on desktop, tablet and mobile. So switching to any of these, you can see we can very easily change the alignment on there, jump back over, jump back over to the desktop, and you can see the alignment will change based upon the device and whatever setting we apply to those particular devices. So very easy. Then we've got the login link style. And this applies then to all the other different options we have for the register, registered, and so on. All have pretty much the same kind of setting. So I'm not going to go through each one of them. But you can see what we can do is we can adjust the typography. We can control the normal and the hover state. And we can do a range of different things then with borders, margins, padding, study the prefix, and all those kinds of good things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to this top section. We're going to select the entire row and column. We're going to style that a little bit. So we're going to come over to the styles option, come down to the classic, choose a color. We're going to go for select this blue, and then we're going to bring that down to get a dark, dark black with a tint of blue to it. So that's pretty cool. Now you can see by doing that, the text now doesn't stand out so well. So if we just come over to this particular widget, jump over to the style section and come into, first of all, the login link section, we can easily change that. So we can change the actual text color for both the normal and the hover state. We can also change the background color. So let's just choose the text color. Let's just set that to be a blue color. And then what we'll do is we'll jump over to the hover and we'll say the text color when you hover over it is going to be white. So let's just test that out. You can see now that makes a little bit more sense. And finally, what we'll do is we'll scroll down to the prefix area and we'll set that to be white as well. So everything now ties in a little bit. So you can see it's very quick and very easy. And then I can simply go through all the different sections on here for the register, the login, logout, and so on, just to make sure that everything is styled consistently. Now I'll do that off camera, so you don't have to watch me doing that, but hopefully what you can see is it is very easy and typical to what you'd expect to see inside Elementor. So that's the auth links widget. Next thing we're going to do is take a look at the search widget. Let's drag that up to the top right hand side. You can see that now inserts a search area. And if we take a look at the left, all the options are available there for us. Now this is a pretty simple search, but it does have a couple of really useful tools and functions built into it. So if we take a look, you can see we've got the search placeholder, show submit button, which we can enable or disable. We've then got things like the submit button label if we want to use it, or we can just limit it to an icon like we currently have. Show the search form in a pop-up, so we can click on that. You can see that now opens up additional options, which means we can have a nice pop-up window to actually display the search, and we'll also get different controls then to style things. Let's just disable that, go back to the normal search. You can see then we've got the option for show effect, and you see we've got a range of different effects that we can use for when this actually displays on screen. What I do think is very useful though is the ability to use is a product search. So if you're using this with something like WooCommerce and you want to restrict your searches on the site or a particular search area that you use this widget on to just your products to ignore any of the posts or pages, you simply need to enable this option and that will now only search for products. So pretty cool. 
If we jump over to the style section, you can see this now gives us a ton of really simple to use styling options. So if we look through, you can see we've got normal and focus, so we can control various different aspects of the actual input form itself. And again, you've got all the things like your padding, you can adjust the typography and so on for the submit button, all those kinds of things you'd expect to see in there. If you've chosen a different form, so we have a pop-up form, for example, you can choose the pop-up box, we can style that. The same goes then for the pop-up trigger, which we can choose what the pop-up trigger and the pop-up close. So we have full styling control over all those different elements. So it's very, very easy. So let's take a, a particular example. Let's just say with this search form, I want to style a few elements in there. At the moment, the search word is kind of hidden with the background of the actual search box itself. So we can come in and we can change that. We've got the placeholder color, which is what you can see at the moment, which is search. So if we click on the placeholder color, and let's set that to be white. So that now stands out a lot better off the background. But what I want that to do now is when I click in there to start searching, I want that to ghost out a little bit. So to do that, we can simply come to the focus option, come to the placeholder text again. This time we'll choose a lighter gray color as opposed to white, and we'll just Go from there, and you'll see now, once I come over and click to focus, you can see that now goes back, becomes slightly darker, and not quite so in your face. So it's very easy to set up and style. We can then go through and do things like change the text color when we're inserting the actual text itself, so we can set that to be white. We could do the same one on focus for the text color. So we'll be typing in there, now that text will be white. So it's very easy, we can adjust the typography and the padding and so on, but hopefully that will demonstrate how easy it is to add a search option, either when you want to use it for your entire site or restrict it just to products if you use an online shop, just using JetBlocks. Okay, so we're part way through creating our custom header section for our website. We've got our login details and my account details. We've also got a nice search for our entire site. Next up, we're gonna drop in both our navigation and the logo that we're going to use. So to do that, let's create a one row, two column setup. Next thing we're gonna do is just grab this design and we're gonna set this to be slightly different layered. So we're gonna set this to be a 3366. That'll do for now, we can adjust that if we need to. Come back over to our widgets and this time we're gonna grab the site logo option and drop that into the left hand side. Now by default, that just pulls in the text for the actual site name itself. We're not restricted to that, we can easily change that. So looking on the left hand side, we can come in and change the logo type for any of three options, text, image, or both the text and the image. For this example, we want to use image. So we're gonna select that. You can see that now opens up two different options. We can choose the logo for normal screen resolution, and we can also choose a retina logo. So if the site is being viewed on a high resolution screen, like an iMac screen or something like that, you can make sure that you get a much better looking logo on there than the standard definition version. For this example, we're gonna keep it simple and just use the normal logo version. So we're gonna to click to go in and choose that from our library, and we're gonna choose our logo, insert our media, and you can see that now inserts it into our design. If I want to adjust these, I'm gonna drag that over a little bit and set it to about 25%. That gives us plenty of space now on the right hand side for our navigation. Before we jump over to that though, let's take a look at what options we have available for our actual logo. So we've taken a look at the content. If we jump into the settings section, you can see we've got two simple options. Linked logo, which makes sure this is a link to our homepage. And we can also set it then to be removing the link on the front page and just let it be the, the sort of link on every internal page. I can't really see the relevance why we want to use that, but the option is there should you need it. If we jump to the style section, you can see now we can control the alignment. And again, we have the option to deal with the alignment based upon the screen type that we're viewing this on. So if we want to, we can have alignment to be left, for example, when we're dealing with the desktop. But then if we look at mobile devices, you can see that doesn't look quite right on the left. So we can just set that to be centered. Now looks a lot better. If we jump back over to our desktop, you can see it goes back over to the left hand side. So very flexible, very easy to work with. We come up the text section. If we were working with text on here instead of the logo, you can see we can then style it, both the color and the typography, and we have full typographic options available on here. So, okay, so that's how easy it is to deal with the site logo. Let's come back out of here, and let's just come down now. We're gonna choose the nav menu. Drag that over to the right-hand side, and you can see that now inserts our nav menu. 
Before we finish this up, I just want to come in and just choose this particular cell and we're going to set this now to be content positioned on the middle so we can make sure that our content sits nice and in line in the center of our layout alongside our actual logo itself. Okay, so once we've done that, we can now come in, choose this widget again, and all the options are available on the left-hand side to us. And there are quite a few options for how we want to set up and style our menu. So first up, we can choose the actual menu that's going to be displayed. So if you have multiple menus on your site, you can specify which one is going to be used for this particular purpose. We can then go through and choose whether we want to have a horizontal or vertical style. So if you wanted to have that vertical style menu on the left or the right-hand side of your page, you could do that simply by choosing vertical, and you can see that immediately updates things for us. Let's just switch that bag over to horizontal. Once we've done that, you can see if we're dealing with a multi-level drop-down type situation with our navigation, we can choose the drop-down icon. So you've got a range to choose from there, so we can pick something that's in keeping with the design and looks great on our website. We'll leave that as is. Next up, again, we've got the alignment options. Now, this is the alignment of the menu structure. Now, there's a difference between the menu alignment and the mobile trigger alignment, and I'll demonstrate that in a moment. So for this particular example, we want to put our menu over to the right-hand side, so you can see that makes a lot more sense in context of this particular heading. However, what we can do is if we jump over to the menu alignment, and we can change it to something like the mobile version, you can see it's now sitting on the left-hand side, which kind of looks a little odd. We want to have this in the center. However, the menu alignment is for the physical contents of your menu. So when you see the links, that's what the menu alignment relates to. If we want to adjust this now in relation to dealing with the mobile side of things, we can use the mobile trigger alignment. So we can just click on that, and you can see that now puts that into the middle and makes a lot more sense. If you want to, we can enable or disable this mobile trigger. We'll leave it enabled. We can then go through and set up things like the icon that's going to be used for opening the actual menu, closing the menu, and the mobile menu location. So we click on there, you can see we've got options like full width, slide from the left side or the right side. So let's just set that to full width and take a look. So we can click on that, click, and you can see that now displays our menu all laid out, but it looks a little odd because everything is aligned to the right-hand side, which is what we set up when we were working with the desktop version. So we want to change that, simply come to center, and now you can see that's now set everything up the way we wanted to. So looking pretty good. And hopefully what you can see, very easy to configure and tweak this based upon the device. So with the basic settings in place, we can now jump over to the style section and go through and start styling things. Now you can see there are a lot of options for how we style things. We've got normal, hover, and active states we can deal with. We've also got things like then the padding, the margins, any border types, drop-down icon size, and so on. And then we've got a ton more options underneath that to configure everything. So what we could do is we could say, well, we want the background color to be a different color. So let's just say we want that to be black, for example. And then we want the text color to be white. So you can see it's very quick and easy to set things up the way that you want. If you want to do things like then to come through and change things on your hover state, we can say, well, we want to do that. So let's come to hover. We'll say that what we want on there is the text background color, for example, to be white. We want the text color to be black. And we'll find now when we hover over, you start to get those kinds of effects. So you can very easily come in and tweak this to get what you want, right the way down through to the typography and also the active state. So whatever link is active, you can style that as well. So I've gone ahead and reset that. So let's just jump back now and show this back on the desktop. So we've got control over all these different aspects. If we scroll down, you can see we can deal with the typography. The drop down then if we're dealing with multi-level navigation, we can control all that, the container width and so on. So a ton of different options on there. And again, we've got the options for the normal hover and active states. Mobile trigger, we can control that as well. Colors, background, all those kinds of things. And finally, the mobile menu, we can set the maximum height, box shadows, and so on, just to make sure everything looks exactly the way we want it to. So there's some of the options you have available in the nav menu. Now, let's just take a look at some of the other things we can do with the jet blocks. Okay, so all the basics are set up, but let's make this look just a little better and operate a little bit slicker. First thing we're going to do is just put a nice little line at the bottom of our logo and navigation section. And that'll become evident in the reason why in a moment. So let's just select that, come over to style. We're going to come down to border. We're going to choose to have a nice dotted border. We're going to set this to be just one pixel at the bottom, and we're going to go for a pale 
gray. Okay, so that's all I want to do on there. But what I do also want to do is just jump over to the advanced section. Now, when you install Jet Blocks, one of the things you get is Jet Sticky. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the navigation and logo area and we're going to make that sticky. So as you scroll at the page, the top section with the login, the search will disappear, but the actual navigation will stay at the top of the page. It'll also become semi-transparent. So it's very easy to do. So once we've done that, we can select it, jump onto the Jet Sticky, and you can see once we enable Jet Sticky, we now get a ton of options. First thing I want to do is disable mobile and tablet because I only want this to be available to someone that's doing this on the desktop. Okay, so once we've done that, we can then control the Z index. So if you have any issues with the sort of navigation sitting underneath some content on your page, then you have control over the Z index to make sure that you can specify this is right at the top of the stacking order. We've then got things like sticky section style, which we can control things like the padding and so on. We're going to come down to the background type though. So we're going to click on it. We're going to come down to the background color. We're going to set that to be white. We're going to take down the transparency just a little bit. Okay, so once we've done that, we are pretty much good to go. We're going to leave the transition. I don't want a box shadow or anything like that on there at this point. We'll leave everything else as is. So we've done the basics. So now if we hit on publish, because we're dealing with templates inside Elemental Pro, we can now specify where this particular template is going to be used. Let's just click on add a condition and we're going to say this is going to be used on the entire site. Hit save and close. That will now become the header section on every single page on our site. So let's just briefly take a look at this in action. I've created a sample page which we've applied this to. So let's just jump over to that. So we're going to hop over and you can see this is the layout. So we've got our top section with our login, my account and so on. Or we've got, you know, sort of register and so on. We've got the search option and then we've got our navigation and logo. So as we scroll down the page now, you'll see that the top section disappears and we now have our sticky navigation with semi-transparent background, all set up very easy, all done through jet blocks. So it's very easy to work with. So the next thing I'm going to do is show you how we can create those custom registration and login pages and then assign those to our login sections at the top of the page. So now we're going to go ahead and create our login and registration pages. So I'm going to jump back into the dashboard and I've already created a blank page with a background image ready to take our registration form. So with that in place, all we need to do is come over to the left hand side, come down to our jet blocks. And as you can see, we've got the option for both the registration form and the login form. So let's just drag that over, drop it into the area that I want in the big middle of my screen. And as you can see there, that drops in all the relevant content. So what we can do is we can go through and just fine tune everything about this. So the first thing we want to do is just put some background color in this. We can have some separation. So just select that particular cell. We're going to come into the background, set that to be white. And also we'll just come in and we'll specify we want to put a little bit of padding around there, say 50 pixels. And the final thing we're going to do is come back to style. I'm going to come to the border and drop a box shadow on there. So that gives us the basis now for our registration form. So let's just jump back over to the actual registration form details. Now you can see on the left hand side, we've got control over all the content in there. Currently we have both the username being displayed as a label and also in the placeholder. So you want to get rid of any of those, you can simply just come in and delete their entry. So let's just say, for example, we want to keep these just using the placeholder to keep it a nice, straightforward, simple form. We can simply come in, delete all the information we don't want in there. And you can see that will very quickly and easily just remove all the extraneous information. Okay, so once we've done that, the next thing we can do is come in and choose some of the other options that go with it. Do we want to give it a confirm password field? Which is a good thing to do because what you can do with that then is you can make sure that whoever types this information in will put their password in twice, which should then reduce the need for having any problems when they're actually registering. But it is purely optional. If you don't want it, you can disable it and you now just have a simple username, email and password for the registration. Let's re-enable that. Next up, you've then got the information about what do you want to put into the actual button itself. So you can set this to be whatever you want in there. So you can change the language in there, whatever you want to actually make it perfect for your particular website. Then we've got the redirect after registration. We've got three options available. So we could just take it straight back to the home page. We can stay on the current page where they register, or we can send them to a custom URL. So you may want to have a little thank you message. You could create a new page, have that thank you message on there, and then once they've registered, redirect them that to that, or whatever you kind of want to do, maybe to the accounts page. Anything at all, you can use any of those three options to do exactly what you want. Then also we have at the end of that, if someone's already registered with the details that they're going to put in, you can see we can put a message up there that says, 
this has already been registered. So very simple, very easy to use, but also gives us a nice simple way of creating this registration form. If we jump over to the style section, we can then go through the process of styling everything. So let's just say, for example, now that I want to put a little bit of space between each of these different areas, well, we can do that very easily. We can come down to the margins, just come in there, uncheck those, and at the bottom, we'll say we'll put 10. You can see now that automatically now just goes through and opens everything up a little bit more. And finally, we've also then got the labels and errors and submit options. So we can fine tune any of the different aspects of this form to make sure it fits perfectly with our site design. Very easy to do. Once we've done that, we can just simply hit update. Once that's updated, we could then simply come out of this. So we exit to the dashboard. You can see there's the link that we're going to use for this particular page. So all I need to do is just make a note of that where it says forward slash register forward slash. Then we can just jump back over into our templates. We'll come into the theme builder and we'll go into our header and we'll just edit that with Elementor. So once we've done that, we can then update that registration button to make sure it goes to the right page. So let's come over choose our authorization links. We're going to say the register link, come in there. We're just going to put in forward slash register forward slash. So there's our actual page. You see it pops up and actually prompts us with the right details to make sure we've got everything in there. So very easy. Now we can do the same thing with the actual sign in form. So again, I've gone ahead and created that blank holding page ready to put our login form in. So again, all we need to do is just drag that, drop that into the location we want. And you can see all the same types of information have been pulled in now for the login, all the same kinds of settings. So we can easily go through, take out any of these labels or the pre-filled information. We can also choose exactly what text we want, where we want to redirect to after a successful login, and a message that if you're already logged in, you try to access this page. And again, the same if we come to the styles, you can see you've got all the same options for fields, labels, submit, and errors. So again, let's just come into the margins, uncheck that, put 10 pixels at the bottom, and there you go. We now have our simply created login form. Okay, so very easy to deal with. So let's just update that page. And then once we've done that, we'll just come back out and we'll take a look again. So you can see now it's forward slash login. So what we need to do is come back to Elementor, into the templates, down to our theme builder, and just update the information for our header. And then we can test that out to see those in action. So just hop back over to our test site and you can see there's our links at the top. So if we click on login, you can see that'll take us over now. And we've got our lovely looking login form all styled up to be consistent with our website. If we come back out of there and we go to the register, you can see we've got exactly the same thing then for the account registration. So it's a super easy way of just making your site look a little bit more slick and a little bit less WordPress default like. So hopefully you found that pretty cool. Let's just jump over now and take a look at the final tools. So we have two more widgets to look at. We've got the option to insert our own custom breadcrumbs and we've got the hamburger panel. So for now, let's take a look at the breadcrumbs first. Let's simply come in and create a new single row column. And what we'll do is we'll come back over to this and we'll drop the breadcrumbs in there. Now breadcrumbs are great if you have a site that has a lot of content and you want to allow the user to see exactly where they are within your content and have an easy way to navigate around without necessarily having to rely upon the main navigation throughout your site. So it's very easy to do with Jetblocks. And what we're going to do is take a look at the options that are available. So as we insert that in there, you can see it'll now show us a very simple panel on the left hand side. Now, while this panel may look pretty simple, it does hold a lot of control over how we want to style our breadcrumbs. So first of all, we've got the show on front page. So we can enable or disable that so we can specify whether this will be shown on the front page of the website. Generally, you probably wouldn't because your front page is going to be your home page and therefore doesn't have second or third levels or beyond sort of levels of content depth. So it's not necessary to do on there, but you can then enable and disable that should you want to. We'll leave that to be no. Then we've got show page title. So we click on that. That will then show us whatever the page title you're currently looking at. So you can see this shows us jet header and it shows us the hierarchy then to exactly where that page is within our site structure. At the moment, we're only kind of two levels deep into the site. But if you have multiple levels, this is a good way of you know, sort of allow people to navigate around very quickly and easily. You can also choose the HTML tag that's going to be associated with that title to make sure that you're dealing with your titles in the right effective manner to make sure that they have the right weight throughout for your SEO and so on. We can then just disable that and put it back to normal. We've then got the show prefix. So you can see if we enable that, we can now insert a prefix before the actual breadcrumb structure. In this case, we've got browse, but we can change that for anything we want to. And again, this is just a simple switch on and off.
Now next up we've got the separator type. Currently we're using an icon, a sort of chevron. And if we click on there you can see we have the option to choose both icons and custom. If we leave it to icon we can then use the icon separator underneath to choose from any of the tons of different icons we have available. However if we just change that over to custom we could simply insert anything we want to in there. So we can change that. We could put an equal sign in, a minus sign, anything you want to in there. So that's pretty cool. We have control over all those aspects of it. So let's put that back to icon. Next up, we've got the path type. So you can see it says full or minified. Now, if you have a site that has two or three layers and not massive, huge titles, then the full is probably fine. But if you have a much bigger site with a lot of levels, then the minified might be a better option where it'll condense it down and give you a smaller, easier to navigate around version. We then have the option for the alignment, so you can see we can easily change that however we want to within our site structure. Next up, we've got the style options, and as you can see, we can go through and we can style both the normal, the hover, and the current state. So this is another way of making sure that the end user can see exactly where they are within the site structure. So for example, let's just say we'll choose current, and we'll just say we want to change the color of that, and we'll set that to be blue, and we'll also change the typography to make it a slightly heavier font. You can see that now updates and tells us that if we are looking at the jet header page, that's going to be highlighted, whereas home isn't the actual current page. Therefore, that's just in the normal font color. So it's very easy to deal with. We can go through and just adjust things like the separator style, the size, the color, all those kinds of things can be controlled directly inside this particular section. And that pretty much is the breadcrumbs inside jet blocks. Very easy to use, but also very useful. So before we move on, let's just take a look at this in action. Let's quickly come in and just apply some simple styling to it. So we'll set the background color to be a very, very pale gray, just to give us some separation from the rest of the site. And we'll also come in there and we'll do a simple border at the bottom. So we'll say we want to have a dotted border. We'll make that a slightly darker gray and we'll set the bottom width on there to be one pixel. Okay, so we'll update that. So that's now assigned that to our site. So let's take a look at our test page to see how this works. Okay, so you can see I'm on one of my internal pages on the site now, and you can see it shows us the structure. We're on the sample page, which is one level down from home, and as you can see, it's styled in blue, bolder, and it makes it easy to just quickly navigate around. So it's very easy to work with. If we jump over to the contact page, you can see that will update and show us contacts. So, super simple. Now the final widget we're going to look at is the hamburger panel. So let's just drag that up onto our page design. And as you can see, it drops in what looks like your typical hamburger menu. And to a certain extent, it sort of is, but with one exception. If we click on it, it doesn't open anything up below like a typical hamburger. What it does is it opens up a panel from either the left or the right-hand side. If I just demonstrate that, I'll click. You can see that pops it in from the right-hand side this time, but we can't swap it onto the left. And as you can see, it says there's no template defined, so please sort of select one or create a new one. Now we'll come back to that in a moment. Let's just close that down. And as you can see, we can just go through now and we've got some styling options. We can specify what icon is going to be used in there for both the icon itself, for the active icon and the close icon. And we can also change the label if we want to use one. If we don't, we can simply delete it. And once we've deleted it, it will then remove it and just leave us with the hamburger menu. We can also go through and position where we want that in our designs. We'll set that to the right hand side. Now the key thing here is the choose template. I've already gone ahead and created a simple content template inside Elementor that's just got a search form of video and some text in there. But it can contain anything you want. So if you wanted to have advanced search functionality in there for your WooCommerce store, you could do that. Whatever you wanted to do. So let's just go through and I'm going to say I'm going to choose my custom panel, which is the template that I've created. Once I click on that, that will now associate that with the hamburger panel. And if we click to open it up again, you'll see now that brings in the custom template that I've created with Elementor Pro. As I said, it's just got some simple text, a search and a video in there. If we want to edit that template, we can click edit template and that'll jump over and allow us to edit it. We can close it down and we can carry on then styling and adjusting the way this hamburger panel actually works. So we open up the settings panel, you can see we've got some very simple options in there. We've got the position, so we can set this to left or right. So we choose left, you can see it now pops in from the left hand side, right goes to the right hand side like we saw. You've got the effect then, so we can choose from a slide, fade or zoom. So let's just take a look at the zoom. We'll click and you can see that now pops in 
from the right hand side. You've also got the option then for the Z index. So you can make sure that if you are dealing with Z index throughout your site and you find that this particular hamburger panel doesn't necessarily show the way you want it to, you can adjust the Z index to make sure it is the very top most item within the entire stack of your website to ensure that it overlaps everything that it needs to. Then we've got the style option. So if we jump in there, you can see we can control the panel width. We can apply a background, gradients, colors, whatever you want to it, borders, padding, drop shadows. We can even go through and style the close button for the normal and the hover states. And we can just choose whatever icon we want as well. The toggle option, pretty much the same kind of thing, so we can control exactly what is displayed there. So it's very simple, very easy to get your head around. So let's just hit update on that. And we've now created our first hamburger panel. So let's just take a look at that in action. So here's our test page. You can see everything is set up. If we now click on the hamburger menu, you'll see it'll pop over from the right hand side, display exactly what we want in there, our video, our search and so on. Click the X to close that down and take you back out of it. So if you want to create a really cool, clean way of actually showing your navigation or extra content on your site, you could employ this very simple to use tool. Now for a normal website, that's basically all the options you have, eight great widgets. But if you install WooCommerce, you get access to a ninth. So I've already gone ahead now, installed WooCommerce, and we're gonna open up the jet blocks on the left-hand side. You can see we now have WooCommerce shopping cart. So we can now create our custom shopping cart section for our navigation. So let's take a look at what we have available. Let's just simply come in and we're gonna create an additional column and we're just going to move our search over to the middle. So we can now use the right hand side to deal with the actual shopping cart information. Come back over and we're going to drop in that shopping cart widget. Drop that in there. You can see now that looks like there's nothing there. That's primarily because we've got the background color set to a dark blue and the text is pretty much a dark blue as well. So we can easily change that. Jump over to the style section and you can see we've got options then for the cart link. So we're going to change these things to white. So we're going to change the background. Uh, the label color sorry the icon color we'll set that to white we'll say we want the count color to be white and finally we'll say the totals color to be white so you can see now that shows up all the information in our shopping cart icon at the top before we close that down let's just come in and just adjust this a little bit so we say we want to put this into the middle and we're going to specify that we want this content over to the right hand side Okay, so we've quickly and easily added in the shopping cart icon section so we can now go through and style and control exactly what's going to be displayed. So you can see we've got the option to put in whatever label we want. So if we didn't want cart, we could say shopping basket. Whatever you want to put in there, you can see it'll update in real time and show us exactly what's going on. We can change the icon if we want to. So we could come in and say we want to put a shopping basket in there instead. You can see very quick and easy to change those things. We've also then got things like, do we want to show the product count? So you might say you want to show the product count, but not necessarily the actual total amount of money. Well, you can enable or disable any of the things that you want. So it's very easy to do. You can even just get rid of those completely and just have the shopping basket in there. Let's put the product count back on and the cart total so we can see what's going on. So you've got the show, show the cart drop down. So in other words, when you mouse over, you can see a little drop down that'll show you information about your shopping cart. It'll show you what contents are in there or if you have nothing in there. So you can enable and disable that and you can also change the title on there. So because we changed it to shopping basket, let's just change that as well. And you can see if we now mouse over, it says my shopping basket. Really quick and easy. Jump over to styles and you can see we've got the option for the alignment. The cart link, we can come into that and we can choose all the kinds of different things we want in there. So we can adjust things like gap between the icons just to make sure everything is nicely spaced out. The actual icon size, we can change that if we want to. Colors, border radius, all those kinds of things right the way down through to the count and so on. So we can easily just adjust these, give them a little bit of space just to make sure everything looks good. And like I say, if we want to take any of those off, let's just say, for example, we don't actually want to display the cart total. Well, we can just come back with the content get rid of the total and you can see that'll update now. So very easy to do. We've also then got control over the cart drop down. If we expand that out, you can see it now shows us what it looks like. So if we want to adjust the position of that, we can come in and adjust the indent on this. So you can see we can very easily come in, tweak to make sure everything is positioned exactly as we want it to be. We've also got the option then to horizontally position left or right. 
We can control the typography, the border type, the alignment of the information that's inside there, everything we really want to control to make sure this fits in exactly the way we want it to throughout our entire site. Same goes for the cart item style. You can see we've got the product list style so we can control the styles on there, the images that are going to be used in there and so on and so forth. So it's a very, very simple, easy and intuitive way of being able to customize and control exactly what's displayed on your shopping cart. So let's take a look at that in action to see what it looks like when you actually use it on your site. So here's our shop page. As you can see, we've got a range of different items. If we take a look at the top right hand corner, we've got our shopping basket with nothing in there. So what we can do is we can say, let's just add that to the basket. You can see that now updates to be in one. If we mouse over, you can see we now can see the items that are in there. We've got the buttons, the view basket and so on. So we can adjust and control everything we want to about those. We can change the text, the size and all those kinds of good things. Should we just jump back over? Take a look, you can see there's our item in there. If we need to adjust anything, we can say, well, let's make that a little bit bigger. We can adjust that. We can come down there and we've got things like the actual card button styles. So let's just say that we don't like the size of the text, looks a bit big, we can change that very easily. So what we need to do is come into the typography section, click and you can see now we can change things. So if you wanna change the letter spacing, we can adjust that very easily. Do exactly the same then for the checkout button if we want to, we can come into there come down, adjust our letter spacing. All pretty easy to do. And again, like I say, we can adjust pretty much every aspect of this, but it integrates into your site pretty much seamlessly, but just opens up a whole ton of options that allow you to fine tune and tweak to make sure that your shopping experience is very, very intuitive. So that is Jetblocks for Elementor, a great way of being able to customize and create your own bespoke headers and footers. If you want to grab yourself a copy, you can jump over to Template Monster. The link is in the description below alongside a nice little discount code that's valid until the end of February 2019. So you can save yourself a little bit of money when you grab yourself a copy. So there we go, that's how easy it is to use the Jetblocks plugin to create more feature-rich headers and footers. Hopefully what this video has demonstrated is it's very easy to use and using it in conjunction with Elementor or Elementor Pro, you have a ton of really cool features you can tap into with this one simple plugin. As always, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. But if you didn't enjoy the video, let me know in the comment section below why you didn't enjoy it. it helps me create better content for you moving forward. Speaking of the comment section, if you've got any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else you'd like to see covered in future videos, pop those in the comment section below. I'd love to get your feedback and get that conversation started. Well, as always, my name has been Paul C. This has been WP Tuts and until next time, take care.